Hi everyone. So sorry, but we had some technical difficulties from the live that we were in the middle of. And now I am trying to start a new one so we can pick up where we left off. So I'm going to wait a few minutes for people to come back. And let's wait and see if everybody comes back. <laughs> okay. Hi, Brenda. Thank you. I have no idea what happened with my phone. Okay. Let's see. I see Brenda, Karen, Monica, Annette. Hi. Hi, Sherry. Okay. Thank y'all for coming back. <laughs> I'll give everybody a couple minutes to rejoin us, but I don't know what I did. All I did was like pick up my phone and turn it. And then when I looked back, the screen was black and it wouldn't let me touch anything or do anything or I don't know. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> so thank y'all for being patient with me and, um, and coming back to now, this will be, so this will be a two part live. <laughs> so thank y'all. Thank you, Wendy, for coming back. So, um, I think it's going to show that the other one, it's going to stay showing that it's live because this actually happened to me before um, when I first like did a test run on YouTube. It showed that, um, oh no, I think it was one of my videos just up and ended um, and it wouldn't let me get back to it. And I don't know if this is a glitch on my end or this is just a glitch with YouTube or how what I could do to, to fix this in the future, but... It's going to continue showing that the part one of this video is live until like midnight tonight. And then it's finally going to click and process and then show as a video by itself. So it's going to show I have two lives going right now. So um, it's Friday the 13th. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I should have known something was going to go wrong tonight. The video blacked out. And I stitched the name upside down. <laughs> I blame Friday the 13th. That's exactly what it is. So, everybody take a sip with me. Do a little woosa. It's going to be okay. Hi, Rita from Australia. That is awesome. Okay, I think... Um, Carol is having some trouble finding the video, so let me refresh this and find the link to our new live and send that to her really quick. Copy. Now I need to go to Facebook. Paste. All right, and I will go ahead and post on Facebook group part two of tonight's sip and stitch and the link to the video and post so if you're in the Facebook group um, the link will be in there too Okay. All right. Now let me go back to the video. All right. Carol, did you find us? Yeah. Michelle got her wine glass emoji. Yep. <laughs> oh yes. May I have some more thumbs up, please? <laughs> I get two for one tonight. Two videos, two thumbs ups. Yeah. Carol's here. Woo! Carol, it's Friday the 13th. Did you know? Did you know? Because now you do. <laughs> okay. Let's take a second here for, did I miss any questions in the last video that decided to black out that I did not answer? <laughs> okay, I was lucky. Number is 13. So is my stepmama, Bonnie. Her birthday is on the 13th of December and 13 is her lucky number. Hubby's birthday is the 13th and her anniversary is the 13th. That's good. Okay. Can I explain how to do a plush robe? It's 
stabilizer examples, etc. Um, I would say a plush robe. I I think you can definitely do tear away. Um, depending on if it's like a terry cloth plush robe, um, then yeah, I would think tear away just like you would do a towel and then a couple, you know, one or two layers of topper. And then if you have, excuse me, the ability to do the knockdown stitch, like I did having enthusiast or excuse me, just buy a, a knockdown frame from creative appliques or something like that, where you have like a pretty knockdown circle or scallop um, to do your mono underneath your monogram. That's what I would do for a plush robe. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, EJ's daughter says, hi, I have that machine. Do you have a card for it? No, so you see my machine has a card reader here. I've never used it. I only use the USB drive. So I do all of my um, designs on my computer. I open them in Brilliance Essentials. I modify it however I want, add a name to it. Um, then I save it as a PES file directly to my flash drive. And then I unplug it from my computer and I plug it in the machine and I read it like that. Monica wanted to confirm that if you buy SA2, isn't one included? Yes. So when you buy, if you buy level two, I think level two was $369. Um, that includes everything in level one plus the features of level two. And when you go to that page that I linked down below, it's going to show you all the, you know, this is everything. All of these stitch types are included in level one. Then, you know, then it has level two and level three. And then it goes stitch creation methods, all the properties in each level. Um, and then more. It shows you everything and all the things that you can do. Okay, so if you buy just level one, it's 169 If you buy level two, it includes everything in level one, and it's 369 And if you buy level three, it includes everything. So I bought level two when I started. And then just recently, I bought the upgrade. So I paid just the difference between these two when I upgraded, if that makes sense. Um, doot, doot, doot. Okay, Betty, speed, your machine is on and do you ever alter the tension uh, we're asked earlier? Okay, the speed my machine is on is, did I move it the other day? No, it's on. So to find out what speed you're on, let me go back to the home screen. Okay. Um, okay. To find the speed your machine is on, go to the settings button, which looks like a little piece of paper with it's folded. And then they'll have some features and I'm just going to use the arrow over button. Okay. So I have it, the inches instead of millimeters. My embroidery tension always stays on zero and my embroidery speed. I have two speed options on this machine. I can either go 650 or 350 and I always have it on 650. Now on my persona over there, when I turn it on, I can see that speed option on my main screen while I'm, you know, my design is up and that one, the max is 1000 stitches per minute. And I have a plus and minus right next to it to where I could lower it to whatever I want within 100 increments. So I could go 900, 800, 700. So like when I do really small lettering on that machine, I lower it to like three or 400 stitches per minute to make sure that my lettering comes out good. But then when I'm doing something like the knockdown stitch or something big, I'll leave that sucker on 1000 and it does pass. <laughs> That's what I did with, um, with this towel. So. Um, is there a certain needle for terry cloth? No, I keep on my 7511 ballpoint needle. Uh, Betty. Where's Betty? Okay, so I told you about my, my speed. Um,
Okay. Okay, I have by level two. What's in level three? I think personally for stitch artists, level two is awesome. Uh, and one of the reasons why I jumped straight into level two and not starting with one is because I have lots of experience with SVG cut files for my Silhouette Cameo and making SVGs. I'm really good with using the Silhouette software with creating things. And with level two, you see how I imported that image um, today for the paw print? That was just an image. Um, with level two, you can import SVGs. So I can take any of my old cut files of designs that I've made over the years and import that into Stitch Artists and turn them into Stitch Files. So for me, that was one of the main reasons why I jumped into level two. And um, it really has a ton of features and everything you need. One of the only reasons why I upgraded to level three recently is because I am starting to sell my digitized designs now, like the one I made on my shirt. And some of the features in level three um, helps with digitizers that are selling and, um, and to make sure that it's something called branching, which is a little hard to explain with, especially with fonts, um, because when you digitize a font, you, you have to break apart the font maybe in several sections and steps to make it come out just right. And level three makes that easier to do. And then also I can click one button and it will save my design in every embroidery format so that I have it all in one zip file and can upload it to my website quickly. So level three might not have been necessary if I wasn't aiming to sell digitized embroidery designs. Okay. Um, but I think level two is, that might be all you need. You know, that, that does a lot. Okay, thick sweatshirts with dense designs. I would do cutaway. I think on any sweatshirt, I would do cutaway. Um, and yes, I would float. Um, uh, one thing that might help with a sweatshirt with a super dense design might be a basting stitch. Um, to help your fabric from shifting. I think that's what I would do. Um, she can't screw up is the, uh, the sweatshirt. <laughs> um, Terry says she promised not to drink and sew that day. <laughs> If you answer Terry's, you don't have any more about this line. Okay. Did mother-in-law like the bag from last week? I'm not giving it to her yet. I'm going to give it to her for Christmas. Um, okay, Michelle, now she knows she only needs level two. Yeah, I think level two is a great way to start. And, and that, I think, has everything you need. And then you can do like I did where I bought level two. That's what I bought. And I got to know it. And I, I'm still, I wouldn't say I'm comfortable with it, but I'm better with it. And when I got to a point, it was actually like a couple nights before I was doing this video and I wanted to make sure my design was perfect before I put it for sale on the website. I was like, I need to upgrade to level three. So um, I bought it and all I had to do was pay the difference. So, you know, it, it doesn't hurt you to go ahead and start lower now and get a feel for it and then you're like okay I, I wish I would have got two it's there's there's no regret in it all you can do you can pay the difference between the price of level one and level two or level two and level three they have upgrade options and you pay the the difference and there's no you're not saving any money buying in level three right now even if you upgrade to that later if that makes sense um do they have stitch artists as a demo so and Brilliance has a demonstration version that lets you try out any of their programs. And if you go to my website right now, carlybell.com, the newest post that I have is the Sip and Stitch on Embrilliance. 
And in that post, I really spelled out the free version of Inbrilliance, and that's Inbrilliance Express, and that only lets you use BX fonts and doesn't let you resize anything. It only opens up BX fonts. That's it. So you could type something out, save it as a PES design and put it, design and put it on your machine. And then I go through the steps of the demo version. And what the demo version does is you download it, and when you open it, a little box pops up and says, which program do you want to test? And it has check marks. So you can put a check next to Essentials and a check next to Stitch Artist Level 1. And then the program will open and it will show you all the features as if you had Essentials and Stitch Artist Level 1. And you play around with it and do whatever you want. But it will not let you save anything and stitch it out. That's the only caveat to it. But you can, I, I use that demo program for a month playing with Stitch Artist before I actually bought it. So download the demo version, click level one, click level one and level two, and get an idea of the features of Stitch Artist and how to use them um, before you buy it. And you could do that with the demonstration version. Um, and like I said, instructions on how to get the demonstration version are on my website right now, carlybell.com. Okay. Do, 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 do. I can use my Cricut files and SVGs trying to figure that out. Yes, Michelle. So I know I didn't realize this until um, a few months ago. I wasn't thinking because I just have Silhouette software, but I wasn't thinking I have the business edition of Silhouette software. I think to if you have made SVG, uh, if not, I'm not SVG. If you have made cut files with your Silhouette software, you don't have the ability to save it as an SVG unless you have the business edition of Silhouette software. I want to say though in Brilliance lets me import Silhouette cut files and not just, um, let me look, that will be on that website, um, and not just SVG if that makes sense. Let's see. Um, let me go to level two. I'm sorry, let me look this up real quick because this is going to bother me if I don't find it. Okay, um, do, 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 the ability to port, import, yes, you can. Okay, so you can import SVG, FCM, and dot .studio, which is Silhouette Studio. So you don't have to have the business edition of Silhouette Studio. You can have the basic edition, have it saved as a Silhouette Studio file, open it in Stitch Artist, and then use the tools to convert your cut file oh. into a stitch file. Yes. Are you using your phone? Yes. Please go. Wait a minute. Hmm? Um, can I ask Daddy real quick? Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. Um, dad, dad, dad! Oh my goodness, she's so loud. Uh, okay, so let me get back to YouTube now because I got distracted. Okay. Um, Khan still won't tell mother-in-law about her bag. <laughs> All right. Um, doo -doo. I, okay. Diana said she recently purchased Stitch Artist 1 to allow cutting embroidery applique pieces on my cutting machine. I just tried it out a few days ago. Works great. Now to experiment with Stitch Artist Level 2. Yeah. All right. Norma. Wait, I missed it. Suggest a two-letter monogram applique font. Hmm. I have to think about that one, Norma. Um, I want to say some of the. Do they have a nice BX font that comes with in Brilliance? Let's see. My go to places for monograms are Itch to Stitch. Um, I think Embroidery Boutique has some nice ones. Creative Applique. Is that gonna do it? 
uh, applique corner. Those are the ones off the top of my head. I have to go and look for a two letter one though. Um, I'd have to get back to you on that one. Um, okay, Carly, am I able to cut applique for my embroidery with the silhouette? Or do I need stitch artists for that? No, wait, hold on. Be quiet, loud mouth. <laughs> That's Abigail. Um, okay, so, okay. Cutting applique with your silhouette. Brenda, you upgraded your silhouette studio um, software. I think you upgraded to business, right? You have to have at least designer edition plus they have like four levels they have basic designer designer plus business you have to have designer plus to open a pes file in silhouette studio and then you can take that pes file it has the cut lines um and i have a video on how to do this um and then you load your material and cut it that's going to fit your applique perfectly um so you don't need to have stitch artists to do that. No, you have your Silhouette Studio software that allows you to do that. Um, one new question from Norma. Norma, Norma, Norma. Can you see, oh, we did that already. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Have you done an embroidered patch yet? No, I haven't. I have that on my list though. I have not done a patch. Yes, Brenda, the video is on my channel and the name of it is how to cut applique using your silhouette. It's that pillow I did. I made the pillow for my cousin's little boy that had Zach with a little spaceship. That's a two part video where one shows you how I cut the Zach applique letters out and then the other part shows you how I applique the spaceship and put the pillow together. And I did all that on the five by 12 hoop for this machine. It was a fun project. Okay, let's finish up my upside down stocking, shall we? <laughs> uh, it's definitely Mommy, Friday. Mommy, what about Bailey's party? It's tomorrow. Okay, Bailey, let's go watch. Bailey, let's go watch the Okay, so I have my, looks like it's right, but it's really wrong. <laughs> so now this would definitely be an oopsie project that I don't think I would be able to save. Um, if this happened to me, I mean, if this wasn't for a video and just for fun, and this was something that I was making for somebody and I messed this up, there is no ripping these seams out. This would this would be an oopsie project. Definitely would have to redo. Um, one thing that I can do to salvage it would be to take and stitch the other side, the cuff, and just turn the stocking where you not get this side would be facing the wall or the fireplace or whatever it is you're putting it on, and um, and this side would be the side showing. <laughs> so that might be what I end up doing. But let's pretend that this is right and it's in the right orientation and I didn't do anything wrong and I just needed to clean this up. So you can see I have some jump stitches going on. So I am gonna cut those jump stitches with my favorite scissors and get those out of there. Got some loops going on there. I'm gonna cut. There are some jumps between the paws that are kind of a little too tiny for me to get. You could try and get them, but a little bit hard. But it wouldn't be a big deal for those to stay because they are really hard to see, I think. Um, from far away, you're not gonna see those. So that is the jump stitches. I'm gonna 
masking tape I had going on here. Then, because this is tearaway stabilizer, oh wait, no, we got pins. I need to take this pin out, pin out. Okay, now this is tearaway, so we can just tear it away. All right. Okay, so done with that. And now you can see my lovely upside down name. I really thought I had it right too. Okay, um, so then you have the water soluble topper. Now, the knockdown stitch is what really this, you know, is where you're pulling this from. And so you just pull it all around like this and kind of tear it just like tear away as best as you can. If you can't get it all, it's fine. We have a way to get the rest of it out. Then I got these sections in between here. It might be a little bit hard. I can try and pull at it. If it doesn't, you don't want to accidentally like pull the, the stocking, you know, the fur and, and, and pull it too much. But if I can't get it, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to spray it with water and it's going to dissolve. And so I have my spray bottle of water. I'm going to spray, try and get my placement marks off too while I'm at it. So I just sprayed that real good. And I got my old towel that I use to rub this kind of stuff with. And so the water really got all my placement marks off and it got all of my water soluble topper out the way. And so the back, we're not really worried about. I'm not worried about these strings. I'm not worried about getting all the tear away out because you're not gonna see that. So this is the only part that is important, except it is upside down. <laughs> so. My solution of what I might do just for myself so that Ozzy uh, maybe would appreciate his stocking a little bit more is I'm gonna embroider this side and I'm gonna make sure it's the right way and then I'm gonna hang it up like this and then nobody's gonna know. <laughs> and then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm gonna do a straight line stitch from here to here to sew this cuff back together. And then I'll have a nice finished embroidered stocking. So, Oop. so do you all have any questions? My beautiful upside down stocking. <laughs> uh, this is what happens when I do live tutorials on Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. It's time for another sip, I think. So, I hope this was helpful for y'all. Um, I hope uh, learning about how I put the design together with the knockdown stitch and making the little paw prints was helpful. Um, so, uh, I hope, you know, showing you how to float it, hopefully... You can see your design a little bit better on your machine so you can really tell what the orientation is. <laughs> um, so I hope all of those things was helpful tonight and y'all just ignore the fact that it came out upside down. But these things happen. They do. Um, and when it does happen, try to find solutions um, with... Like my solution is I'm going to embroider the other side and you're not going to see it. Um, other solution was it was a two or three dollar stocking. I'm just going to go buy another one <laughs> and redo it. But uh, I am always the most paranoid when I'm making things. When people come and bring me something like a bag that's for them to embroider that if I do mess it up, how am I going to find another bag? And I have a really... Uh, 
Y'all, if, if you've been around and, and you've watched some of my videos, you may know that I am not the best speller. Um, I mess up spelling a lot and I'm very paranoid about spelling names. And um, I uh, got a cute little bag once. It was like one of those drawstring backpacks that my neighbor brought me for her son that went to this um, high school in New Orleans and asked me to put the name on it. And I spelled the name wrong. And I realized I spelled the name wrong after I showed it to her. She's like, uh, the name is spelled wrong. I was like, so I drove my butt to that high school um, and went to their little store and bought another drawstring backpack <laughs> and did it again and spelled it right. But luckily it was something I could go and buy and fix it. And I still ended up like, uh, I still ended up even or maybe like I, I, um, I think I was only charging her $10 to put the name on the bag and the bag cost $10. So I was like, like I didn't make no money, but I didn't lose any money. So it worked out fine. <laughs> so these things happen and eh, you gotta just keep going. Um, okay. Lots of great salvage ideas above. Just remove the cuff and sew it on the other way. Yes. All right, I'd remove the white and turn it, then you could see it rec correctly. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Let's see. So, I can rip this, then turn it around and sew this side to this then it would be right. I might do that. That's a good idea. Thank you, Brenda. Okay. Uh, Janie X, so the stabilizer that was on the back, it's thrown away. Yes, I just rip. Um, I ripped it out the hoop and what was left in the hoop I threw away. I actually put it in my recycle bin because it's like paper, so I don't see why they can't recycle it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. What did Khan say? Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrely. Squirrely was my nickname in high school because I couldn't spell squirrel right. And my friend Jessica looks and like, what did you write? Squirrely? And I'm like, and so then they called me Squirrely. Yeah. I can't spell. I still can't spell. Sometimes spell, spell check can't even figure out what I'm trying to type. And I have to like ask Siri or ask Alexa, how do you spell this? Because even typing it, they can't figure out what I'm trying to write. Yeah. Never, ever, ever been a good speller. Ooh, Monica had a good idea of a dog bone applique. So I could stitch a dog bone and I could digitize that on my Stitch Artist to fit it perfectly. I could do a different material and then restitch Ozzy in that dog over that um, applique material and in the right orientation. Yes. <laughs> Connie said her son's name is Brian and he had a birthday cake once I said happy birthday brain. <laughs> That'd be something I would do. <laughs> If I made his cake, yes. Um, okay. One too many sips. Good night. Good night, Mitch. <laughs> oh, Kristen says she has to rewatch. Girl, it is Friday the 13th, and it shows in these videos tonight, Kristen. So I, this is now a two-part live. The first part was going smoothly until the end where I realized I stitched the name upside down and then the screen went black. And so we started over with a new sip and stitch, a new live video to finish up the project. And now we're talking about ways we could fix this. <laughs> um, and EJ's daughter said she uh, spelled Isaiah wrong. That I would definitely spell that name wrong. So, well, thank y'all all so much for the moral support of me. <laughs> <laughs> messing up tonight. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> and I think I will fix this with Brenda's idea. I will rip this seam and and turn it around and sew it differently. 
I think that is super easy to do and it'd be less time than it would be to embroider this side with the um with the design I think I'm gonna do that and so then I could take a nice picture of it for you and it'd be the right way so I'll do that and I will post a picture in the Facebook group if you're not already a member of our Facebook group please come join us I have a link for it in the description box down below um, oh Connie said use my serger that's a good idea um, and come back and join us next Friday for another sip and stitch um, I am pretty sure we're gonna do a Christmas ornament next Friday um, and it's gonna be a cute one y'all are gonna like it and I'll put all the details of what you'll need um, and the designs that I'm gonna use on the Sip and Stitch homepage at carlybell.com slash sip, sip and stitch, sip and stitch. I don't know. Just go to carlybell.com. You'll see it in the menu at the top. Um, uh, but it is linked in the description box down below. Please give my video a thumbs up if you enjoyed tonight's <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> and um, thank you all again. Uh, Michelle, my start time is usually 7 p.m. Central Time Zone. Uh, and I think that's it. So y'all have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you make lots of pretty things. After you make them, take a picture and post them in the Facebook group. I love looking at all the beautiful things that everybody makes. And I will see y'all next week. So good night.